is going on ladies and gentlemen my name is Twigger and I have another high ELO commentary for you guys focusing in on H2K's top laner Odawamne current playing currently playing solo queue as Rise up in the top lane against an Echo in the top and just a couple other people that we can mention in this game we're going to be mostly focused on Odawamne's Rise um, just to see how he plays that one hopefully we'll see it come out in the LCS um, but we're seeing also Spy's Yamato Cannon um, Splice's coach Yamato Cannon I did confirm that that is in fact him which should be very cool he's a coach um, but he actually did use to play in the LCS which is very very cool so hopefully see some good stuff out of him but we also have on the Gregus um, Elements Gilius which is the jungler for uh, team elements in the EU LCS as well so a couple big names in this uh, this game right now all on the same team as well which is very very cool but the thing that I'm focused on and what I really want to see is how Odoamne plays this rise rise has just been a champion that has initially dominated the LCS, right? It was in every single game or banned in every single game as a top laner, then as a mid laner. It, it was just a dominant pick all the time. But now you've really seen it fall off. Um, I don't know, maybe if it was the changes to Thunderlords or if it just something just didn't add up anymore with the rise. Um, but it looks like Odawamne picking it up. I guess still thinking that it's quite a solid pick to bring to solo queue. Um, but we're going to have to see what he builds. I already see that just having that refillable potion rather than just going regular pots, um, definitely an interesting way to build build just uh, to have that kind of constant sustain that you get to refill going back maybe save yourself some gold because as we all know rise is a little bit of a uh a person that you need a lot of money to build with, but we already have a lot of damage coming out of Echo going on to Odawamne. The Runic Prism having to come out. It looks like Ultimate is not available for Odawamne. The Grasp of the Undying keeping the Echo very, very healthy, but here comes Gilius using the Body Slam Flash. It's going to get the first blood onto the Echo. Just having great faith in that one. It looks like the uh, Gragas Gilius was taking down the Scuttle Crab. And I guess Odawamne probably telling him, listen, you can come up top lane and probably get yourself a free kill. So Odawamne, even sitting on almost no mana, sat back, relied on his jungler to be able to flash Body Slam. And sadly, the Echo, even having his flash available, was just not able to react fast enough to that Gragas Body Slam. So incredibly well played by the two of them. Going to be excited to see what Ryze goes back to purchase with that assist gold. Um, but looking at the teams a little bit here... Um, um, in the bot lane, we have a Thresh Lucian versus a Callista Bard. Uh, fairly standard bot lane, I would say. Nothing really over the top or wacky about that. Um, definitely some LCS level material in the bot lane. In the mid lane, we have LeBlanc versus Lissandra. Once again, very, very common lane. Two very strong champions, but two very different champions. Of course, LeBlanc looking for that huge assassination potential. Lissandra looking for a lot of damage, but more sustained damage. Kalista taking a lot of damage, having to flash away because the ignite was currently on. Looks like Odawamne was ready to teleport in onto that ward, but does decide to cancel it. So, it's going to be a teleport at least on a half cooldown rather than the full cooldown, but this bot lane definitely looking to be a little bit aggressive. Gilius is now coming in from the rear. Um, they don't have vision of this, but it looks like he's not actually going to go in for this one. Um, just maybe trying to provide a little bit of additional pressure for his bot lane. But um, definitely a lot of action going on in the first couple minutes of this game. We are only seven minutes in. Um, so I'll be curious to see what these teams uh, bring out in the later, sorry, the mid to late game portion of the game. But already almost 11,000 gold to 9.4k. Um, already substantial lead in favor of this red team. Um, that we can kind of establish based off of the CS. When you look down at this list, uh, Rise sitting at 49 over the Echo's 30. Uh, Lissandra sitting at 61 over the LeBlanc's 51. But I can't talk about that because the... Hard, taking a ton of damage, having to be ulti by the Kalista to keep him alive, but Kalista now trying to do a lot of damage. The turret dive is going to happen because the Bard ultimate tempered fate is going to be onto the turret. Mid is a slave. The Kalista is going to pick up a double kill on that one with a fantastic amount of baits coming out of that Bard. Bard taking an insane amount of damage, but then just getting brought in by Kalista's ultimate, jumping away from that one, using his ultimate to make sure that the turret wasn't going to be able to affect that tower dive, and that just went absolutely wonderful for the red team. Really, really well played. Odawamne getting into a little bit of a pickle with the Cassius. The Cassius having to burn his flash though because that runic prism was on him right when he was underneath the turret. But it looks like Yamada Cannon getting jumped on. The ultimate going to be used to mimic her ethereal chain. So I'm um, going to be lacking some damage there, but just trying to get as much damage as possible, I guess, off onto this Lissandra without having her turn. Um, so it looks like Odawamne is feeling pretty comfortable up in that lane. The fact that he got away from a Kazix gank. Um, I, I haven't even mentioned the fact, yeah, it's a Kha'Zix in the jungle, um, which we don't see very often anymore. Um, Kha'Zix, of course, being one of those champions that his isolation damage is 
insane. Um, if he catches you by himself, um, his Q will absolutely tear you to shreds. The problem is most teams like grouping up when you're at this level. So Kazakh just kind of loses that potential, but here comes the Gragas and the Bard as well. The Lantern is going to come out, save the Lucian's life. Um, not really that much happening there. Now, I thought that the Gragas might go a little bit more aggressive, but he didn't have his ultimate available, so without that explosive cast would have run into an issue. But the ultimate coming out of Yamato Cannon's Lissandra, gonna try to run away from this one, but an amazing ethereal chains from the LeBlanc with the Ignite is gonna be enough to pick off Yamato Cannon. Just knowing where the Lissandra was gonna end up and getting that chains out was perfectly done, and that's just an easy kill for the LeBlanc, just having to burn her Ignite for that one. And uh, sadly, yeah, the Yamato Cannon just going down to that. Looks like he's currently in his items um, going for that Abyssal scepter um it looks like the leblanc also kind of favoring that item go for that little bit of uh, magic resistance to deal with uh the team that you're currently facing um, looks like the junglers are currently up in the uh, the dragon area. Kaz is going to try to take down a pink ward. Gilly is going to try to return some damage, but once again, here's this isolation damage Gilly is getting himself into, but an amazing explosive cast into the Bard. Callista is now here, the ultimate coming out of the Kazakhs, but it's not going to be enough, and Callista picking up her third kill of the game with those Ren stacks. Very, very nicely done from the Gragas. Once again, it's just kind of baiting people out, right? Knowing that the Kazakhs was going to go in on that because he was getting the isolation damage, which was pretty insane, but it's just baiting him in and then the explosive cast comes out the bard and the Callista were already roaming so great attention to detail from those guys and attention to the minimap um and now we've got a substantial lead onto this Callista and of course as we're seeing here oh the culling coming out though the magical journey is going to be placed so and they're going to get out of that one but as we were kind of seeing the bard is running thunderlords which i think is the standard thing to build on bard um of course is passive when you get your chimes you get those meeps behind you um and then you get to have an empowered auto attack which actually counts as two abilities when you auto attack so one more ability like a q and you're already proccing your thunderlords but looks like an uh, Big amount of damage coming out of the Kazakhs and also the Thresh, but the Ignite going down onto the Thresh, the Tempered Fate coming out as well. The Bard is still alive, and the Tempered Fate onto the Kazakhs means... Oh, sorry, he's not alive. Sorry, he was dying. That was a dying animation, not him uh, kind of partying. <laughs> that was definitely a dead Bard. Um, Gliss is taking a turret shot, and she is currently low. She's taking another turret shot. Um... Not entirely sure what the... I, I think Kalissa just kind of realized that there was no getting out of that one. Um, at least from doing that, it was just the Thresh and the uh, the Kazakhs that ended up being part of that kill. The LeBlanc didn't get in on that. And also the Lucian who was running down from the bot side uh, didn't manage to get in on that. So... Um, really good play, uh, just generally on the Callista's part, but, uh, of course it sucks to die and give away a shutdown, but just looking up at Ryze, nothing too simple, uh, sorry, nothing too complex here, he's going for the Catalyst, he's already got his Seer of the Goddess, which he's stacking up fairly well, about a quarter of the way there, um, and he's got his Catalyst for that Rod of Ages, it's, this is like the staple Ryze build, I don't think it's ever changed, um, it's always that Rod of Ages into the, uh, the Archangel Sap when that thing's completed, your man, you, your abilities also scale off of mana, if you guys didn't know that, as you can see, the blue number at the bottom 39 extra magic damage um you get a lot of extra damage coming from your mana but looks like the uh the ultimate coming out of the rise there you of course want to go in when you have your uh, your full stacks from spell casting um basically makes it so you can almost infinitely chain people if you know what you're doing rise being a uh i would say a fairly complicated champion he used to be remarkably simple before he was reworked but it looks like the Echo now going in onto the Rise. Not going to land the stun, but Kazix is now here. Not going to have the isolation damage because he is currently in minions. Rise is going to try to turn this one, but it is not going to be enough to get through the damage of the Echo and also the Kazix. So that is going to be Odawamne's first death of the game at 12 and a half minutes. But we're still sitting with a 20k to 17.8k gold lead in favor of the red team. Um, Kalista just kind of doing work on this bot side 4 and 1. But it looks like the Rend is not going to come out. But Gregus is here, does not have his explosive cask available. So not really going to be able to make anything happen here. The LeBlanc is just kind of roaming down to try to do a little bit of damage to the Yamato Cannon, but the Blade of the Rune King going off onto the kill. Oh, man! Kalista going really ham. Why are we looking at the rise? The Kalista going way too ham on that one, and the Tempered Fate is not going to land in time, but Kalista flashing forward to try to get more stacks onto the Lucian to get a kill, but Thresh is now going to flash, hook the Bard, keep him underneath the turret, get him away from that magical journey, and that is going to be a kill for the Lucian. So it just goes to show a little bit too much aggression from the red side's bot lane. 
Um, looks like Yamato Cannon gonna be in a bit of a pickle here. Gonna have to flash away from that. Don't know what that second mimicked Ethereal Chains was, but, uh, does manage to miss, uh, Yamato Cannon, but he did have to burn his flash to get away from that one, so, uh, looks like Odawamne trying to make something happen onto the Kazakhs, but looks like nothing's gonna come from it. So, yeah, as we were just kind of saying before, a little bit of over-aggression from the bot side. Kalissa thinking that she could get that kill, but slowed by the box coming from Thresh and then taking way too many turret shots, um, uh, from that second tier turret. And then, of course, you gotta run through the first tier turret, which you haven't taken yet. Yet, and that means Bard is gonna die. So, um... Echo gonna try to get in on this one. The LeBlanc and the Cassius are both here for a turret dive. Echo taking a lot of damage. He currently has the aggro, but he does have his chrono break to get away from that one. So very, very easy turret dive. All three members of the blue side getting in on that one. And now we just have a 500 gold deficit between these teams. It is evened up incredibly quickly. And just 14 minutes into the game. So yeah, it was just a couple minutes in between that gold lead that was almost 3.5 thousand in favor of the red team to now nearly an even game. And now it's 200 gold ahead for the blue side so there's your shift in gold just a couple great plays a couple greedy plays from the red team and it can very well swing back and now once again it's swung back in favor of the red team those turrets now finally going down first couple turrets of the game one in favor of each team and now it's going to be interesting so once these turrets are down those first tier turrets in the bot side and the top side you now start to see what teams are going to do do they start grouping up do they start pushing for things like dragon or rift herald or do they start going for the mid side turret but it looks like the Kalista being locked up by the ethereal chains by leblanc bard is trying to get in here is going to be able to get the slow from the cube but not the stun a lot of damage coming up from those meat attacks but my god that was a lot of damage coming down from that leblanc the teleport is now available for the echo it's gonna flash but he's gonna get Callista ulted the bard's gonna stay alive for now and Callista's gonna jump away from the w from the echo putting a lot of stacks in is the red gonna be enough it is gonna be enough now leblanc the next target the ignite onto the Callista, but it is not gonna be enough to pick her up and that is going to be a double kill for the currently fed Callista. but now the tempered fate coming out locking down the kazakhs as well sorry not the kazakhs the thresh and it looks like bard's gonna pick up his first kill of the game with the help of Gragas and Kalista. Now it looks like Odawanme being jumped on by the Kazakhs. A lot of damage coming up from this isolation, and that is going to be a very easy kill. Pride taking down that one. I cannot believe the amount of action that we've got going here. 27k to 24.4k in favor of the red team, but um, Odawamne not having the best of games. Had a really good early start, but um, looks like just a couple really nicely coordinated ganks on the top side is putting him a little bit further back. Luckily, he does have his Rod of Ages, so even though he's dying, he's going to continue to stack that thing. He's going to continue to get stronger. As we all know, Ryze isn't the strongest early game champion, but you get him to the late game, and that guy is a hyper carry. Just this machine Machine gun rise of spells, um, which should be able to do a lot for his team in the late game. He just has to make it there. But the Echo showing his pressure on the map, currently sitting at 1, 2, and 1. But uh, 122 CS in favor of the rise to Echo's 83. And then also 135 for the uh, Lissandra to the 100 of the LeBlanc. And the 150 to 103 in favor of Kalista. We're seeing just huge spikes um, of minions in favor of this red team. Um, looks like the culling going to be used just to clear out all the minions. A lot of damage coming from the LeBlanc once again with that Mimic Sigil of Silence, but the Thresh is going to be knocked back. So is the Kazakh shoving it at the exact wrong time, but it looks like Lilisandra using her ultimate on herself going to try to take down the uh, the Thresh, but it's not going to be quite enough yet, but Kalissa is going to be enough to clean that one up. The LeBlanc is going to be taken down as well. That's a double kill for Kalissa, putting her at 8, 2, and 1 after using the Blade of the Rune King active to chase down the LeBlanc there. And that's actually an interesting buy as well, going for that early Blade of the Rune King build first. Um, it it just Blade of the Rune King into Runans, doing a lot of percentage health damage. Um, I'm not entirely sure actually what else. You know what? Maybe that is actually the standard way that you build it. I'm trying to think of other ways that you build Kalissa, but that does seem fairly standard. I just knew the Runans Hurricane had to come out, but looks like the uh, top lane turret was finally taken down. Odawamne just continuing his push. Um, still not up there with his Seer of the Goddess. 508 out of the 750. Um, that's required, but using that ultimate, getting the movement speed to run away from that one, uh, doing a little bit of damage to the Echo, but not enough to kill him, and Ryze is currently out of mana, so not really going to be able to provide much more support, but the red team was able to take down the second tier turret of the mid lane. Look at that isolation damage. My goodness, that's what Kha'Zix does, but it looks like they might have caught Yamato Cannon, but no, he is going to get away, and a huge tempered fate, landing on three people, having to force people to burn their flashes, but Kalissa taking a lot of damage from the LeBlanc. Not going to be enough to take her out, though. The Echo now trying to use his E, his dash to get in there, 
there. Kazakh's trying to get to the Kalissa as well. She's at such low HP. The hook coming up from the Thresh is not going to be enough to pick her up, but it looks like the LeBlanc is going to get the kill. A couple Qs coming up from the Bard to lock people down, but right now the Gragas is in trouble. The Echo's blocking the Body Slam, so he can't escape this one. And looks like Bard is now in a very bad situation trying to escape this one, but luckily he does have magical journeys and a lot of movement speed coming from his W when he heals himself up, and he is going to escape that one. But Yamato Cannon and Bard being alive with Oda Wamne as well. That was a lot of kills in favor of the blue side, and now a counter jungle red buff. Just things like that start swinging the game. They also got another shutdown onto the Kalista, giving them more team gold. So 28.8k to 34.4k. It's not the worst thing that I've seen. They could very well come back from this. Oda Wamne trying to flash onto the Kazakhs, but not quite enough to get him. But it looks like he's now turning his attention to the LeBlanc. The Bard is now here. Rise is going to turn onto the Kazakhs, but it's going to get thresh hooked, and it looks like LeBlanc taking him down so quickly. The Kazakhs is going very aggressive, even at very, very low HP. But now we have the Fed Kalissa using the Blade of the Rune King. Gonna probably get that rend. And that is gonna be a dead Lucian. Kalissa now on the hunt. Is gonna flash right into the hook of the Thresh. The Ignite currently ticking, but gonna throw out a Q and get that LeBlanc as well. And that's gonna be a triple kill for the Kalista. Even though she got hooked, it was not enough. The LeBlanc wanted to get into. Oh man, and Kazix is gonna kill the Bard. Did not realize that the Kazix was still there. He was trying to be, and he is just gonna annihilate him. Um, is gonna take down a ward, but it looks like Yamato Cannon trying to get in on this one. Gilius is now on the chase um jump is not gonna be enough explosive cast trying to get him into the <laughs> so looks like the Gregus tried to use his barrel then use the explosive cast to push the kazakhs into the barrel but sadly that didn't pan out just went right into the wall but luckily you had the Kalista there to finish that kill off now sitting at 12 3 and 1 in a solo queue game this is nuts this is the exact type of Kalista that you want but the issue that you're facing here and what i always like talking about um, when it comes to these games, a lot of teams at this point, uh, especially in my ELO, uh, in that platinum area, people tend to say it's like, oh god, like Kalista's fed, GG, game over. Um, but the thing is, Kalista is the only person fed on that team. Right? Kalista has all the kills. Can't talk about that right now. Thresh taking a lot of damage. Kalista picking up another kill! But finally, Oda Wamne picking up his first kill of the game. I think we're finally going to start seeing Ryze be a little bit more proactive during this game. Now that he has his Rod of Ages. And it looks like it's almost there. Almost 100 more stacks that he needs uh, for that uh, tier of the Goddess to be finished off. Um, but uh, the thing is, Kalista is the only fed person. So if you use... Some, well, they don't have an exhaust, but... If you use everything you have to just kill the Kalista, um, the enemy team's not gonna have a lot of da sorry, a lot of damage. And they're just kinda gonna run out of damage, and then you can kind of use the rest of your damage on people like the Echo, the Kazix, and the LeBlanc, who all have a decent amount of kills um, to clear up the rest of the team. So I don't know how well they're gonna be able to execute that because Kalista has been playing a pretty phenomenal game um, and staying very, very safe. But right now it looks like there are four members of the team and Kalista is not with her team. The fed person is not there. Looks like Lissandra taking a lot of damage is gonna die before even being able to use her ultimate. Now Greg is being locked down by the Tempered Fate. The explosive cast coming out to try to separate everybody, but the Thresh hook is gonna land onto Gilius and that is gonna be a dead fat man. But while all that was going on, Kalista was able to take down the second tier turret of the top lane. But now Rise, Odawamne trying to run for his life, does have a lot of mana so might be able to turn this one using his ultimate but not going to be enough he's going to be taken down by the lucian and while that happened in the top lane Callista was taken down by the kazakhs and now bard in a really bad situation is going to be taken down and that is going to be an ace in favor of the blue team and now they are eyeing down the baron which is a smart idea because you have five people and they have none so I don't know why the red team decided to be that aggressive or to be even that far in without the Callista. Right, exactly what we were talking about. Without the Kalista, you guys have no damage. That's the main issue there. Like, Ryze hasn't really gotten going. The Gragas isn't that strong. Yamato Cannon doesn't have any kills. It's just you don't have any damage without the Kalista. And they were pushing to the inhibitor without her. So, yeah, it was just an easy cleanup. So, looks like the TP going to be coming out from Odawamne to get to that mid lane. Using his ultimate to just try to get in and take down as many minions as possible. The dragon is still available. And nobody has looked for this dragon at all. Now we finally do see a ping. Um, but no dragons have been taken whatsoever this game. So, curious to see which team will be the first to strike blood on the dragon. Looks like Gragas is going for it. And Ryze went back, purchased his Archangel Staff, and that already finished immediately into the Seraph's Embrace. So, we're getting to that point with Ryze that he will become very, very strong. We just need him to get there. Um, he will become that hyper carry eventually, 
But the thing is, will this team be able to make it to the late game where he's going to be really powerful? Echo taking a little bit of damage. The Tempered Fate coming out of the bar, landing onto the Thresh. He is going to get locked down by this Kalista W, but so much damage. Kha'Zix is now jumping in, trying to get resets, but not going to be able to kill anybody yet. The Kalista using her ultimate on the bar, keeping him safe. Kalista doing a lot of damage, managing to take down the Le sorry the LeBlanc. Odawamne took down that one. Kalista is now taken down by the Kha'Zix, and so much damage going on to these guys, and it looks like that's going to be cleaned up. Odawamne now trying to do his best to clean everybody up, but the Thresh hook is going to be enough to lock him down, and he's not going to be able to do the damage that he wanted if he wasn't actually CC'd. He might have been able to kill everybody on that team, but he was CC'd, so he couldn't cast any spells, and that was another ace. That was a 5 for 2 exchange in favor of the blue team who have this Baron buff, who could very well try to push up into the, sorry, the mid lane turrets, maybe be able to get one or two turrets at least, and the red team didn't even get the dragon, so they might look to get that as well. It's been a very, very interesting game, my friends. Very, very interesting. Um, but we still are sitting, like, even though all of this stuff happened, we're still sitting with about a 4,000 gold lead in favor of the red team. Well, about 3,000. Um, so it's it's still in the red team's hands, um, but they're, they're just not winning these team fights. Uh, the Thresh is being on point uh, with his hooks that he needs to land. Um, those clutch ones on Rise are paying off really, really well. The Kha'Zix is getting an insane amount of execute damage going on people, and he has pretty much built all tanky, um, other than the Hex Trigger, which is only magic resist item. Um, the Rise taking a little bit of damage from this LeBlanc. Not going to be enough to take him down, but enough to take him down to a quarter HP, which is uh, impressive because he does have a Rod of Ages. So that's a pretty healthy Rise that you're chunking down pretty hard. But of course, having that Abyssal Scepter and the Morella Nomicon and another uh, needlessly large Rod to boot, I'm not surprised that she's doing quite a bit of damage. But looks like the first Dragon of the game going in favor of the blue team. Gragas is just going to Body Slam away from this one. LeBlanc might want to chase on this. No, they are not going to go for that one. Not knowing where the rest of the team is. Sadly, there's just not a lot of vision for the blue team in the enemy team's jungle the pink ward coming down to clear up that ward they want to keep their jungle as warded as possible but the tempered fate coming out landing on one but the lantern is available for the leblanc the echo now landing a great stun it looks like the lissandra once again getting picked off before she can use her ultimate yamato cannon just not getting lucky at all this game just being bursted down perfectly by the enemy team and so that was just a one for nothing trade. All you really wasted was the culling and the uh, the chrono break. But that's going to be a kill and also a turret. So yeah, they're just landing these really clutch forms of CC onto uh, Yamato Cannon. So he can't even ulti away from them or st ulti to stay safe. LeBlanc using her Mimic on her Distortion. A great grab onto Glissa, but she is going to flash away. It looks like the Thresh is going to be taken down. And also Odawamne taking down the Lucian. Greg is being taken down very quickly by the burst damage from the Kha'Zix. But it looks like Echo is going to be traded for that one. The Magical Journey coming down for the LeBlanc going to destroy it away. A great Q from the, sorry, the Kalissa is going to be enough to slow the LeBlanc down. She doesn't have a lot of mana, but I don't know if these guys are going to be able to chase on this one. Does have enough for another distortion. The Magical Journey coming out. This is a great team to chase. Bard is trying to get in on this one. The distortion is now available again. She has fairly low cooldowns because of that Morella Namica giving 20% CDR. And this just could be a chase that the red team is not going to win, but they are going to continue chasing it. Here's the, uh, the Magical Journey not even landing all the way across. That's such an awkward journey. Journey. Look at that thing. It just went a little bit, but the Tempered Fate coming down. The LeBlanc is going to turn onto the Kalissa. Going to flash away, but it is not going to be enough. It was a great placement of that Tempered Fate to force the LeBlanc to turn around, and they managed to pick that one up. Kalissa picking up her 15th kill of the game, but Oda Wamne, I think, is the person that I'm most excited for now because he's finally picking up kills. He's got four kills, but seven deaths and three assists, so he's got his Void Staff now. Oh, Kalista, you are far too forward for a Kalista. And that is going to be a dead Callista. Yep. You can't be that far forward with no support when you're facing a Kha'Zix. That burst damage is going to be too much, no matter who you are. Even though she's got a Sterix Gauge now and also a Bloodthirster, it's just not going to be there. She didn't have the Sterix Gauge while she was fighting there, or else that would have probably procced. But she has it now to try to get a little bit more survivability from the burst damage coming out of the Kha'Zix and the LeBlanc. Definitely a smart pickup. Um, the Baron's going to be live in about a minute 40, so nobody really has to worry about that right now. That Scuttle Crab isn't even going to be alive while the Baron is active. Um, the Dragon not gonna be up for a long time either so there's no real objectives on the map for anybody i think both of these teams are just gonna look to try to farm up their jungle try to find any farm they can buy their items and prepare for the next team fight um it's been an incredibly close game it was really in favor of the red team for the first beginning oh there's the bm i was like man i haven't seen a single person send out their rank 5 mastery and i know that these guys have these rank 5 masteries but haven't seen them yet 
Uh, but now we finally saw one. But uh, just looking, like, the reason that there is that gold lead, like, I've said it so many times now, but it's still so prevalent, is the CS numbers that the red team is pushing out. 187 to the 138 in favor of Ryze. 257 in favor of Yamato Cannons Lissandra over the 133 LeBlanc. 237 in favor of the Callista over the 198 of Lucian. Like, those are adding so much gold uh, to their coin purse without even having to pick up kills. So even though Yamato Cannon has died four times and hasn't picked up a kill, he has four assists and also 257 farm. The gold is not that far off. 10,000, he's winning in gold. So that just goes to show, even if you're losing in kills, if you get your CS up there, he's got almost 11,000 gold to LeBlanc's 9,000. But it looks like Bard is going to get hooked here by the Thresh. The calling coming out as well. A lot of damage going down onto the Bard. The Gragas is going to jump onto the LeBlanc and it looks like Yamato Cannon finally got his first kill of the game, managing to use his ultimate in the middle of a team fight. LeBlanc is, sorry, um, Yamato Cannon is going to finally be taken down by the Lucian. The Bard's magical journey is going to come in. The Kalista trying to get in on this one. Echo going to use his W. Not sure where that's exactly landing over by the uh, the other people, but Odawamne being absolutely chunked down by this Kazakhs. He is going to flash over the wall and that's going to be a rampage Kazakhs for that one. Just an insane amount of damage. But Lucian flashing and turning it onto the Bard is going to pick that one up. But Kalista now doing a ton of damage. The stun is probably going to land. It is going to land onto the Kalista, but using her Quicksilver Sash to get back onto this Echo. Greg is taking a lot of damage. The Chrono Break coming up from the Echo as well is going to add to the damage, which is going to kill Gragas. Kazakhs picking up his 14th kill of the game. So a lot of damage from the Kalista, but you saw the execute damage coming from that Kazakhs onto Odawamne. This is a guy who has Rod of Ages and also Archangel Staff with that shield, and it was nothing to that Kazakhs, who's currently sitting at 14, 3, and 7 with that isolation damage. That was a brutal amount of damage. So I believe that that was a 4 for 2 exchange? If I'm not mistaken, I know that the LeBlanc... Oh, sorry, 4 for 3 probably because the Lucian did die as well. So, yeah, just a very, very close team fight. Um, still got about a 5,000 gold lead in favor of the red team. So, it's still their game. The Baron is now up. So, I'm thinking we're getting to the point of the game where these death timers are quite long and both teams have pushed up quite a bit. Um, that the next team fight will lead to a Baron and then the next team fight after that will probably lead to the game being over. Um, I'm curious to see whether the red team is wanting to go for this Baron. Wow, Kalista does start it off. They do have that pink ward though so the enemy team does know that this is an option the echo is going to use his tp to get in here the magical journey coming out of the bar just to get everybody safe and sound from this odawamne is going to get caught by the ethereal chains and right now it looks like pride is currently being caught out this is not good that's the jungler he is not going to die quite yet though no the tempered fate is going to come out and land the red team is going to definitely jump in on this one odawamne is there gilius is going to try to take down the uh the kazakhs and is going to be successful on that kalista the steric gauge goes off and she's still going to survive taking down the leblanc the thresh is now the next target odawamne picking up the thresh and that is currently a three for nothing exchange and that is going to be the bear but oh my god bard that was the wrong magical journey to take buddy that is the magical journey to death which we all don't like so that's gonna be a free kill on the bard not entirely sure what he was thinking on that one but the journey looked magical and he wanted to take it um, the smite is available for Gilius, so there should be a free Baron. It looks like the Kalista going to use her Ren, going to pick that one up. Lucian doing a lot of damage to the Kalista, but it's, sorry, the, uh, the Lysandra, but it's not going to be enough. Lysandra picking up the Baron, and also the Lucian Echo now being chased down by Gragas. The escapes, the E coming out of the, uh, the Echo is on such a short cooldown that I really doubt that Gragas was going to be able to pick that one up anyways, because he didn't have his ultimate either. So that, in the end, is going to be a 4 for 1 exchange, and the Baron. So, a huge shift in the game almost at that 10,000 gold lead in favor of the red team when you hit that 10,000 gold lead that's kind of like the flame horizon you're allowed to flame your team at that point um, because that is a very substantial amount of gold to be behind looks like the red team gonna pick up their first dragon of the game getting that six percent additional AP and AD um, which doesn't really mean a lot at the early portions of the game but now we're 30 and 31 and a half minutes into this game an extra six percent damage is pretty damn substantial now when you're looking at a rise late game and also a Kalista who now has all her items. All she needs is upgrade her boots and that Kalista's full build at just 31 and a half minutes into this game. That is insane. She got the Mercurial Scimitar to make sure that she can get out of any lockdown that happens, especially a Thresh Hook if she gets caught and then also we saw the Sterex Gauge keeping her alive through the burst damage of LeBlanc and Kazakhs. Very, very smart build um, coming out of the Kalista, but they're still going to have to avoid hooks. Um, Odawamne taking his time to go down to the bot lane. He currently has six kills, so he is definitely starting to become that late game rise that we all know and fear. Um, Odawamne is just going to continue to split push. The Lucian being caught out completely by the explosive cask, and it looks like the ultimate coming down from Yamato Cannon is going to be enough to clean up that Lucian. The Gragas body slam is going to land onto the LeBlanc, but the damage is not going to be enough to take her down. The Tempered Fate's going to come 
come out, but it's not going to land on anybody. Thresh is going to be taken down by Yamato Cannon, sitting at 3, 5, and 7. Odawamne now getting into a fight with this Kazakhs. I don't know who's going to win this one. It is going to be... G sorry, it's going to be Pride. The Kazakhs picking up that one with the isolation damage. Odawamne was so close to actually being able to pick that one up and having that revenge kill on the Kazakhs, but just not enough damage to actually seal the deal on that kill. And right now, there are three members. Well, not really two members dead, but the Kazakhs is being chased down by this Gragas. Galista might want to try to end this, but, you know, with the Echo and the LeBlanc still being alive, I don't think they're going to want to end this. They might just want to go back and purchase some items. But Kalista is going to go in for this one, doing a lot of damage, but it looks like the Lysandra is going to use her W to lock down the Kazakhs. But the Flash coming out of the Kazakhs to get the reset with his Q and run away from this one. Kazakhs is now trying to solo Gilius. So much damage. An amazing juke onto the Body Slam. And Kazakhs isolation damage has been nuts. Jumping over and getting the double kill. Soloing at a quarter HP. But now it looks like we have a fight in the base of the blue side. Galista taking a ton of damage. Having a flash away. But it's going to be a double kill for her using the Ren Sacks onto the Thresh. That's going to be a triple kill in favor of the Kalista. Is she going to get the Quadra kill onto the Echo? Is she going to get it? Looks like he's kind of standing there. I don't know what's really happening here. The uh, <laughs> Just kind of healing with the, uh, the Fountain. But... Looks like Kalista is not actually going to end up getting a quadra kill or a pentakill. They are looking like they're just going to stand in the base. Um, yeah, I don't think they're going to want to dive this one. They're probably just going to try to end the game here. But what an amazing display from that Kazix in the end of that. At a quarter HP, getting another two kills. That was very, very impressive. But an amazing game coming out of the Kalista. Um, but Kazakh's trying to once again do some damage. These guys are just joking around with them now. Odawamne taking a ton of damage though. It's almost going to be taken down. Has to flash away. Healing up a little bit. But it looks like the Echo's Chrono Break is going to save him. The, the Bard is going to be taken back and thrown into almost a turret. And there's the Tempered Fate locking out three people. Lysandra is now here. Going to lock everybody down and use her ultimate on herself. Glissa trying to do some damage to be able to get more kills to pad her KDA. But it is not going to matter. At 35 to 35, 34 minutes into this game, the red team finally do end up picking up a victory. So Odawamne really showing what he had in the later portion of the game wasn't enough to actually take down the Kazakhs so in a 1v1 though. But Kalista really putting the team on her shoulders. 22 and 6 at the end of that game. Very, very well played from the red team, but also very well played from people like the Kazakhs on the blue team who just showed how powerful that champion can be if it's in the right hands. Hopefully you guys did enjoy that high ELO commentary. If you did, show that like button a little bit of love. Thank you guys so much for commenting, liking, subscribing, and sharing this video with your friends. And if you want to know when I release a video or when I make announcements, follow me at TwiggerLol on Twitter. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you have not already. Ladies and gentlemen, I love you so much, and I will see you guys all in the next video.